welcome back to my channel today we will be discussing about the second component in the mathematical system which is the defined terms but before we proceed we have to review first the undefined terms we have the point a point is represented by a dot and it is named by a capital letter next we have the line a line is a straight line with an infinite length on both directions it is named by two letters with a symbol line on top of the two letters. And then we have the subsets of a line. We have the first one is a ray. Ray has a beginning and extends infinitely in one direction. And then we have the line segment. It has a beginning and an end. Oh, next doon sa undefined terms natin is the plane. Okay, it is a flat surface extending infinitely in all directions. So, a plane has an infinite length, an infinite width, but has no thickness. So, these terms will be used to define all other terms and figures in the study of geometry. A definition is a precise statement or description of the meaning of a term or word so that anyone using it will understand it in the same way. Siyempre, kailangan pareho tayo ng definition para magkaroon tayo ng pagkakaintindihan. Kasi kapag magkaiba tayo ng definition, hindi tayo magkakaintindihan, hindi ba? <laughs> we are going to define the following terms. Collinear points, coplanar points, parallel lines, perpendicular lines, midpoint, angle, right angle, vertical angles, adjacent angles, linear pair, supplementary angles, complementary angles, angle by sector, and the segment by sector. Let's start with the collinear points and coplanar points. What are the difference between these two? Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. As you can see in the figure, point F, point O, and point H lie on the same line. Therefore, they are collinear points. And then, coplanar points are points that lie on the same plane. So, as you can see, points F, O, H cannot be coplanar points because they lie on the same line. Coplanar points are points F, R, and H or points H, R, and O. They are the coplanar points. Then, we have the parallel lines. Parallel lines are lines that do not intersect. So, these two lines, line JT is parallel to line DS. Next, we have the perpendicular lines. Two lines that intersect and form right angles are what you call perpendicular lines. Okay, line AB is perpendicular to line CD. The small square that you see is the representation of a right angle. So, the symbol for perpendicular line is the inverted capital T. Next, we have midpoint, a point on a line segment that divides it into two equal parts. We have here segment LM, and the point K is the midpoint. If K is the midpoint of segment LM, then segment KL is equal to segment KM, or segment KL is congruent to segment KM. Angle, it is a figure formed by two rays with a common point. We have here an angle with a common point of P. So therefore, you can name the angle in three different ways. We have three letters. The middle letter is what you call the common point. So therefore, angle QPR. And then we have angle P or the number inside the arc or the angle is angle 1. Right angle. It is an angle whose measure is 90 degrees. So we have angle RST is a right angle. Then we have vertical angles. Two angles in which the sides of one angle are the opposite rays to the sides of the other angles. So angle XZY and angle WZV are vertical angles. Same with angle XZW and YZV are vertical angles. Next, adjacent angles. Two angles with a common vertex and a common side. So we have angle 1 and angle 2 are adjacent angles. 
linear pair. These are two adjacent angles with their non-common sides forming a straight angle which measures 180 degrees. So angle H and angle J are linear pair. Then we have the supplementary angles. The sum of the measures of two angles is 180 degrees. Therefore, the previous one linear pair is also supplementary angles. Same with this example, if measure of angle A is equal to 110 degrees and measure of angle B is equal to 70 degrees and measure of angle A plus measure of angle B is equal to 180 degrees, then angle A and angle B are supplementary angles. Same with if measure of angle C is equal to 55 degrees and measure of angle D is equal to 125 degrees and measure of angle C plus measure of angle D is equal to 180 degrees, then angle C and angle D are supplementary angles. Complementary angles. The sum of the measures of two angles is 90 degrees. We have here if measure of angle E is 35 degrees and measure Measure of angle F is equal to 55 degrees and measure of angle E plus measure of angle F is equal to 90 degrees, then angle E and angle F are complementary angles. Then we have the second example, if, if measure of angle G is equal to 45 degrees and measure of angle H is equal to 45 degrees and measure of angle G plus measure of angle H is equal to 90 degrees, then angle G and angle H are complementary angles. Then we have the angle bisector, a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles. If ray BC is an angle bisector, then measure of angle ABC is equal to measure of angle CBD. And the last one, we have the segment bisector. It is a point, a line, a ray, or a segment that divides the segment into two congruent parts. We have here, if ray IJ bisect line HK, then segment HJ is equal to segment JK. Okay, they are equal. Okay, so we're done with the defined terms. I hope you learned something from my video. Next time, we're going to talk about the axioms, the postulates, and the theorems. Till my next video, goodbye for now.